Welcome to the ever-increasing world feast. My goodness, harvest of answers. Abel Damina is my name. So mightily grew the world and prevailed. Today that world is going to grow again mightily. I want to welcome all of you that are joining in from all over the world. Wherever you're hooking in, I want you to know I'm greatly delighted that you have developed such a commitment to the word of his grace and prayer. In Acts of the Apostles, the Apostles said, we will give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. And the Bible tells us that the word, what, that the word of his grace multiplied, multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. I believe wherever you're watching, the word of his grace is multiplying greatly in your community. Let me also mention that a number of people in the course of broadcast have questions. If you have a question to ask, shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Prayer begins from knowledge. In fact, the time invested in prayer preparation is more than the actual prayer itself. That's why we take time to teach the word before we pray. Because there's no point praying when you don't even know what you're praying for. You know, um, he says your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. Like we have established prayer is a medium of exercising your authority on the earth. Scripture tells us men ought always to pray and not to faint. So when you're not praying, you're fainting. And let me tell you the amazing thing. When you refuse to exercise your authority, somebody will exercise it for you. And that's why knowledge becomes very key and fundamental. That's why we take time to teach before we pray every day. And I'm glad that there are lots of testimonies flowing in from all over the world concerning answers to prayers that have been received. If you pay attention carefully, when Brother Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus, the church at Colossae, the church at Philippi, even Philemon, his prayer was knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Brother Peter will say grace and peace be multiplied. Grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. Scripture tells us the righteous through knowledge shall be delivered. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You do err because you know not the scriptures nor the power of God. So the knowledge of God is equivalent to the release of power. When you know him, grace increases. The knowledge of Christ brings you to a place of total rest. The knowledge of Christ brings you to a place of grace. And you know, the writer of Hebrews who say, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Today as the word of his grace comes, and at the end of it all, when we pray, you will find grace, you will obtain mercy to help in time of need. I decree you will not lack help in the name of Jesus. Tag friends, invite family members, let's get into that word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you your inheritance among the sanctified. And I'll be back at the end of the broadcast to spend a couple more minutes with you. Happy fellowship. The book of James chapter 1 verse, uh, verse 5 If any of you lack wisdom Let him ask of the giving God Let him ask of the giving God The giving God That giveth to all men liberally And upbraideth not He doesn't find fault And it shall be given him It shall be given him It didn't say it may be given It shall be given him With God it shall be given but let him ask in faith, not in wavering. The faith is not for God to give. The faith is to enable him receive what God has given. Let him ask in faith, not in wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of a sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Next verse. For let not that man think that he shall receive. He didn't say let not that wavery man think he shall, he shall be given. He said he shall receive. Because the giving God giveth to all men liberally and does not find fault and it shall be given. But the man asking from the giving God will require faith to receive. With the giving God is being given. And the word receive is a Greek word, lambano. It means to take, to seize, to take hold of. So the man that is asking will need, will need, will need to lambano what has been given. Will need to receive it. But that's where he needs faith. To receive what the giving God has given. Can somebody shout amen. 
and so we looked at a number of things and we've established that the prayer of asking and receiving or the prayer of needs is ask is you ask you receive you have you ask you receive you have meanwhile the prayer of supplication is not you ask and receive and have because the prayer of supplication is not a prayer for things the prayer of things is prayed with the rules of what things soever you desire when you pray believe you receive when you pray and you shall have but in the prayer of supplication we began to see that the prayer of supplication is actually the major prayer in the epistles you know prayed by the apostles the epistles spread much more of supplication than asking and receiving actually predominantly the prayers of asking and receiving were in the gospels there are only two references to asking and receiving in the epistles and even those two references has to be thoroughly examined and that is third john verse 2 third john verse 2 above all things i wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth that's one the second one is in the philippians, philippians chapter 4 he says uh, you know do not be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication let your request be made known to god those are the only two references in the entire epistles where the prayer where, where, where scriptures made references to the prayer of needs but otherwise all other prayers of the epistles by the apostles were all supplication prayers and you're going to see very quickly why they zeroed on the prayers of supplication james calls it the heartfelt look at it in james chapter 5 james chapter 5 verse 16 confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much the amplified said the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working that this kind of prayer called supplication is prayed by a righteous man this prayer is the prayer of a righteous man and he prays it from his righteous position he prays it from his position as the righteous and that prayer prayed by the righteous in his position as a righteous must be heartfelt must be earnest must be continued it's not ask receive have uh -uh. this is earnest heartfelt continued it has a quality of persistence heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available when this power is made available it is dynamic that is the power gets into situations changes and rearranges things and you know we have dealt with prayer and needs now we're dealing with prayer and circumstances and we established that circumstances are created by people so this prayer is a prayer that deals with people so instead of praying for the circumstances you pray for the people that's intelligent praying because every circumstance is created by somebody so instead of dealing with the circumstance and leaving the person if you deal with the circumstance he can keep creating so you deal with the person in prayer and this dealing with the person is where the prayer of supplication comes in and of course i have told you you cannot break a man's will in prayer you cannot force a man's will in prayer i have told you that the name of jesus does not have authority over the will of a man in prayer have i taught you all of that yeah it doesn't because god doesn't force anybody if god if if the name of jesus has authority over the will of a man in prayer then it will have begun to be in effect from genesis when god said to adam the knowledge of the tree the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life oh yeah choose life whether you like it or not to show you that god doesn't force men he told adam this is it this is it as a loving father but as a father i advise you choose that one that it may be well with you but adam rejected the choice and god didn't kill him because god doesn't force people instead god came down in love and began to look for how to help fix this problem that this boy has created is that true 
because he doesn't force people's wills so that's where the prayer of supplication comes in dealing with circumstances and every day of our lives we are confronted with circumstances is that true every day every day from the time you wake up till the time you go to sleep even while sleeping circumstances are being created that is why the prayer of supplication is continued it's not what you pray and believe i receive and it finishes uh -uh. this is continued continued because you're dealing with circumstances and this is what every human being is confronted with every day of his life so the earnest continued heartfelt prayer of a righteous man this prayer is prayed from the position of righteousness it makes tremendous power available that is dynamic that is this power has the capacity to change and rearrange things to solve problems create solutions bring about solutions bring about direction it has the capacity to create opportunities because when you are stuck financially what you need is an opportunity or a favor once a favor is created and a breakthrough comes through that favor you can solve all the problems let's say you have a problem for uh, have a problem with landlord that's a situation and the landlord is on your neck then you have a problem with school fees for one of your children that's another situation the school is on your neck then suddenly you have another situation with your grandfather in the village who is at the point of death requires money in the village money for house rent money for school fees here are you surrounded with situations that is where supplication comes because what supplication does is to generate power that can deal with all the problems at was now when supplication generates power somebody from somewhere is influenced by the power generated by prayer he just looks at you and say i don't know but something is telling me to give you two million where is your bank account bam the money drops your rent was three hundred thousand school fees was hundred thousand your father in the village is only fifty thousand so with less than five hundred thousand you have solved the problems and you have 1.5 million to invest so the effectual prayer of the righteous had made has made power available and this power has produced works of dynamite i'm teaching here so that is why we said the prayerless christian is a powerless christian because he does not make power available so now prayer is no more a luxury prayer suddenly becomes what a believer has to do always so now you see why jesus said men ought always to pray and not to faint if you're with me on the same chapter let your amen be taller than your neighbor yeah. right so let's travel a little more thank you lord elias was a man of like passion he prayed earnestly that it may not rain abby as we are he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months verse 18 and he prayed again supplication he prayed earnestly that it may not rain and he prayed again it was not a prayer of ask believe you receive half uh -uh, it was earnest prayer so what elijah prayed was a prayer of supplication we also see the same in the life of abraham abraham prayed a prayer of supplication oh god if you find 50 righteous men will you destroy the city god said no what about 45 what about 40 it was a continued prayer of supplication he was praying earnestly but the problem with abraham was that he gave up somewhere too fast in the prayer of supplication you don't stop praying till everything is settled and even when it is settled you continue praying to preserve what you have gotten it's more of a lifetime prayer that's what every believer ought to pray all their life supplication because needs don't arise every day abby needs don't arise every day there are days you don't have the need for things but you have the need to supplicate because it may not be things but it could be people people can misunderstand you and team up against you you need to supplicate the prayers of supplication hallelujah if abraham had continued he would have had the result he was looking for where sodom and gomorrah was concerned look at the book of genesis 32 let's look at something else on heartfelt continued prayer genesis 32 verse 24 and jacob was left alone 
And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day break it. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince, thou hast power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. As a prince, thou hast power with God, and because you have power with God, you have power with men to prevail. The reason why you have power with men is because you have power with God. So because your power with God, you have power with men in such a way that you are able to prevail. Jacob prayed all night. And it was a prayer that was never given up. I will not let you go. Something has to change in my life. Now, listen very carefully. That was Jacob praying before the cross. But he applied the principles of supplication. That doesn't mean you two are going to be praying. I will not leave you till you bless me. That does not apply. The prayer itself does not apply to you. What applies to you is the principle. Because you don't need blessing. You have been blessed. You have been blessed with how much? All spiritual blessings. So you don't need to pray what Jacob prayed. What I'm bringing out of that is the principle of supplication. See, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. And the angel said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. I'm a thief. A supplanter. Then he gave him, boom, broke his tie. I said, okay, from now, something has shifted in your life. You will no longer be called a thief. You are now the Israel of God. Because as a prince, as a judge, as a man in authority, you have power with God. Therefore, the power you have with God is reflected in you having power with men. Therefore, you have prevailed. So, you prevail over circumstances when you generate power with God. I'm teaching here. You prevail over what? Circumstances when you have what? Power with God. How do you have power with God? The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Make a tremendous power available, dynamic way in his workings. I'm teaching here. He make a tremendous power available that is dynamic in his workings. Glory to God. I say glory to God. The word power is the word yokos. Y-A-K-O-S. In the, in, the, in the Hebrew, it means privilege or authority. You have, you have power. You have yokos. Privilege or authority. Okay? The word prevail is the Hebrew word serah. S-A-R-A-H. Serah. It means you have persisted. Or you have contended you have prevailed it means you persisted until you got what you wanted you have persisted or you have contended until you got what you're looking for can somebody shout hallelujah so supplication is based on the fact that we have power with God so we can prevail among men we have generated power with God in the place of fellowship, thanksgiving, and making of demands and requests. And because we have power with God, we are able to prevail over circumstances and situations. So you don't leave things to chance. Because God said, let them have dominion. And prayer is the medium of exercising that dominion on the earth especially the prayers of supplication the prayers we are praying every day for the next one year in this church is the it is called the prayers of supplication is the prayers of supplication and that's why i'm going to take time to deal with this because once you understand this you will see the kind of results that that prayer is going to keep generating it's a prayer of supplication. Amen. So the key element in the prayer of supplication that delivers the result that, that we refer to in that prayer as faith, 
the key element in the prayer of supplication that we refer to in that prayer of supplication as faith is the persistence the faith in that prayer is the never giving up attitude i will not quit i'm going to stay on this thing this thing has to work that attitude is the faith in the prayer of supplication we don't quit because we didn't learn that from christ somebody say i, I never quit say that very loud say it one more time somebody say i don't give up say it is not in me we are not of they that give up that's right you start the business it didn't work start another one as long as in your heart you know that that's where you belong start another one if it doesn't work start another one age is on your side we don't give up because many factors could be responsible in crumbling a business the staff can team up to spoil the business am i talking here neighbors can frustrate your business human factors are involved in business so when you are dealing with things that involve human beings creating circumstances it is the prayer of supplication you stay in that prayer till you win i'm teaching here i said i'm teaching here same thing with ministry ministry requires prayer of supplication because sometimes the enemies of a church are members of that church and when the members of your church are the enemies of the growth of your church it's a serious matter supplication is your way out because there are members that will be sitting in the church and praying for the church to close but they are sitting there and they are saying amen i'm teaching now look at the way you're looking at me no be today i begin pastor let me use pidgin english I've been a pastor for decades now, so I know church people. This one, some of you are looking very gentle. Only God knows what you have said before you came. Only God knows. Ah, what church people? I'll leave that in. Not today. Maybe today. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer of the church. He was the treasurer. He was carrying the money bag. Leave that in. So sometimes you have people in the church who don't want the church to grow. And I know pastors are watching right now. What you do is supplication. When you begin to pray supplication, you generate power. When the power is generated, it will flush them out. Fiap! They're out of the church. Fiap! Something will happen. They vex and go. They are going. It's not a demotion. It's a promotion. Their absence is to let the church grow. There are people that leave church. We should do thanksgiving. I'm teaching here. Yes, sir. Lift your right hand and shout, I shall be counted. I refuse to be useless in the house of God. I didn't hear your amen. This is a very serious service. I'm not saying it behind you. I'm looking at your faces with microphone. People who are very committed to a vision don't leave it. People who have invested money into something, they stick to that thing. Even if it is not for the thing, for the money they have invested. That's why Jesus said, where your treasure is. Do you leave your heart? You stay with your heart. You stay with your heart. You stay with your heart. Paul said, there are men that have hazarded their lives for the gospel. They have hazarded. There are such men in the kingdom. You will hear something this night. Just thank God that you came. The prayer of supplication. The prayer of supplication. So when you begin to pray the prayer, there are elements, even in your business, there are some staff in your place of work that are agents. When you begin to pray those prayers, power will be generated that will shake the whole system. They will fall out. Then it will look like the business is stranded then relevant people that have the brain to move it will start showing up how many of you understand what i'm talking about yes even in relationships there are some people in your life right now that are smiling with you but they are your undoing when you give yourself to supplication they will fall out you are not the one that prayed them out oh. you only generated power but the power will know what to do 
That's why when you don't pray, all kinds of nonsense happens. When you start praying, nonsense is taken care of. Say, I hear you. Lift your right hand and shout, I receive grace for supplication. I didn't hear your amen. Look, Paul's major ministry of prayer was this area. Paul didn't talk about anything else. Now, supplication didn't talk throughout. When I had a year pigeon English, and for those of you watching, it was supplication Paul dealt with throughout. A prayer of supplication. Earnest, heartfelt, continued, continued, continued prayer. Look at it. Let's, let's take a few examples of this. In the book of Ephesians 1.16, that's a prayer of supplication. Cease not to give thanks. Do you see the word cease not? That means it's a continued prayer. Cease not to give thanks for you. Make him mention of you in my prayers. This was a continual prayer. So this is the kind of prayer we, we pray for you every day. Now listen. I pray this prayer for you. You pray this prayer for you. You don't pray this prayer for me. That Ephesians 1 6 is not the prayer for Papa. It is Papa's prayer for you and your own prayer for yourself. If you, for you to pray this prayer for me is an insult. I am not the one that needs the eyes of my understanding and lighting. It is you that is hearing the message I'm bringing. I will show you my own prayers. My own is there, your own is there. I'm teaching now. Yes, this one is for church members. This is not for pastors. You don't pray these prayers for your pastors. This prayer is for church members. That, that's why Paul say, I cease, I, the apostle, I cease not to give thanks, making mention of you in my prayers. So this is the prayer the apostle prays for the congregation. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. And this is the prayer the congregation pray for themselves. You don't pray this for us. I will show you our own prayer. Everybody has his own. That's why in prayer you must be taught. If not, you'll be praying the wrong prayer for the wrong people. And you'll be wondering why your prayers are not making the impact you desire. Because prayers have rules. See I hear. Prayers have what? They have rules. Praying with all manner of prayer. Manner. All types. So Ephesians 1.16 is a prayer of the apostle for the church and the prayer of the church for one another. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that, that, the, that you may know what is the hope of your calling. I already know my calling. That's why I'm your pastor. That's why I'm your pastor. I already have my calling. You need to know your own calling because there are some of you sitting here. Your calling is evangelism. But you are still sitting in church. When we say evangelism, you are not happy. You are rejecting your calling. So our prayer is that you know your calling. So you can fulfill it. See, I hear. We, we have already answered our call. That the eyes of your, know the hope of your calling. What the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. That you may know that. The exceeding greatness of his power. To us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in christ when he raised him from, from where the dead and set him at his own right hand where in the heavenlies next verse far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named uh, not only in this world but also in that which is to come that's the prayer of the apostle for the church and that's the prayer of the church for one another but it is not prayed once and for all it is a continued prayer for life it's a lifetime prayer Kenneth Hagin said he prayed it all his life I pray it every day for myself. I pray it for myself. You don't pray it for me. I pray it for myself. I will show you the one you will pray for me. If you stay with that one, I will show you to pray for me. It will take care of major things. Say, I hear you. I'll show you another one. Prayer of supplication prayed by Apostle Paul for the church in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit, where? Can I hear you shout it very loud? In the inner man, verse 17, that Christ may dwell where? In your hearts by faith, that you, 
being what rooted and yes because that is important for uh, for me to pray that prayer for you that you will be rooted and grounded because there are some of you that are now rooted and grounded you're in power city for two years then you look for another church another two years then you look for, you are not rooted most of the people that move around are not pastors pastors are stationary it's members that move around so the prayer is that you be rooted not moving around carried about with every wind of doctrine just perambulating all over the place that you be established rooted that you be grounded in love grounded where see when you are grounded in love and somebody offend you you won't leave church you won't leave church the reason why you leave church when people offend you is that you're not grounded in love because love covers a multitude of sin and love love does not insist on its own love does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices when the truth prevails so when you are establishing love and somebody step on your toe you forgive him even without his apology because the love of god constrains it constrains when you feel like lashing out the love of god pulls you back it's a constraining force but when you are not grounded in love somebody just talk to you somebody say is it because i joined that church i won't go to church again is it by force you have left you're not grounded in love or you are in church but you're keeping malice you're not grounded in love a brother is greeting you you turn your back because there's something he did you didn't like you're not grounded so that's why we pray these prayers for you to be grounded in love so that the love of god in your heart will help you to overlook things and strengthen the brethren some of you are not grounded in love some of you have reacted you are a reaction you can't even endure you can't even overlook things you're very re retaliative and it's coming from a vengeance point of view a mindset of vengeance there are things you forget you just overlook and forgive you don't even record them you don't even call the person's attention to it you just let it go because you are gracious you are like your father god doesn't call your attention to everything see that you may be like your father who is in heaven the entire mission is to make you look like god on the earth see i hear you yeah am i teaching here if you're hearing say i hear you yeah some of you are not grounded in love came to church and all shall say sit there you get angry you say i will not sit i say i will not sit you where did they give you to sit you're not grounded in love so that's why it's a prayer we pray all the time and even if all of you get grounded new people are going to come that are not grounded so it's an ongoing prayer somebody say i hear you so that's why paul said this what i pray for you all the time another prayer that paul prays supplication prayer that paul's pray. i'm already giving you prayer point for our prayers so you know the kind of prayers we pray when we gather to pray together as a church philippians 1 9 and this i pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment verse 10 that you may approve things that are excellent that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of christ verse 11 being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by jesus christ unto the glory and praise of god verse 12 but i would you should understand brethren that these things which happen unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel now he prayed for them then he's now admonishing them based on some persecution he has come out of paul just came out of persecution and he was telling them brethren the things i went through have only turned out to further the gospel what it was was meant for evil for me has just turned out to promote the gospel we are preaching i don't know if you understand yeah that's what paul was talking about another prayer that paul prayed which is a prayer of, of supplication is in colossians colossians chapter 1 verse 9 for this cause we also since the day we had we had it do not cease to pray for you supplication do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding verse 10 that you might walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god verse 11 strengthen with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience 
and long suffering with joyfulness if you believe in that prayer I just prayed for you now shout a good amen to that so all the polite prayers were supplications that word supplication is the word this is d-e-e-s-i-s in greek it means to fix a demand no shifting of ground we stay on it till it happens and even when it happens we still stay there no shifting of ground this is amen philippians 1 19 for i know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ this is prayer for the apostle i know that this shall turn to my salvation the word salvation there is the word deliverance the word deliverance there does not mean demons possess the apostle it means human beings have set trap all kinds of trap for the man of god both physical trap verbal trap human intrigues accusations all kinds of traps so paul is saying i know that if you give leave yourselves to pray for me your prayers will turn this whole trap to my deliverance that where they were planning to bring shame on me your prayer will cancel the shame and what will have been shame in the ministry will become a celebration let me tell you the truth when you see ministries that are breaking forth majorly around the world the members of those churches have abandoned themselves to pray for the for their pastor i mean i'll prove it to you in the bible right now any ministry you see breaking grounds and expanding beyond limits know that the members have given themselves to pray for the man of god because when you begin to pray for the man of god the man of god begins to enter into certain realms of victory his victory becomes your victory i have told you before if you pray every day for one hour makes 15 minutes for me make 10 minutes for you it is safer for you it is safer for you because all of us put together in this church the devil doesn't see you he sees me i am the coach of this camp so the more i triumph the more you triumph the more i excel you excel the more grounds i possess you possess my victory is your victory i'm teaching here that's why he says strike the shepherd and what will happen so who is keeping the sheep together the shepherd paul said i know that this shall turn to my salvation through what your prayer so your prayer for the apostle is deliverance you pray that he be delivered and i'm going to show you the scriptures it's called prayer of supplication and that prayer does not end you keep praying for me till we see jesus it will only end the day we see jesus amen is that difficult no, it only ends the day we see jesus acts 1 14. what were they doing before the day of pentecost this all continued with one accord in prayer and so the prayer they were praying was supplication before pentecost then they say well jesus told us to tarry here we shall receive holy ghost on the day of pentecost if they have sat there till today pentecost will not have arrived they prayed pentecost they took the promise jesus gave them and they pray it into reality in supplication that means they were praying until the holy ghost came they didn't stop they continued in prayer and in the midst of that prayer that they continued in when the day of pentecost came bam the holy ghost came on them they prayed just like i showed you yesterday jesus was told that when he will be baptized he will be received the holy ghost he didn't keep quiet he prayed even when they were baptizing he was praying till the spirit came supplication supplication that is not like the prayer of faith which is asking and receiving that is the prayer of supplication which the faith in the prayer is the persistence am i communicating please if you understand me say i hear you the persistence in that prayer is the faith action in that prayer a never giving up attitude a never quitting attitude the people knew how to receive in acts And, and you know, when, when the Holy Ghost now hit them, Pastor Priest, when the Holy Ghost came on them because they were praying, 
The only thing the people had was the thanksgiving part. They had them giving thanks. Why were they giving thanks? That was the end of their prayer. Did I teach you that? When thanksgiving begins in prayer, what is happening? You are rounding up. They had them giving thanks in their language. That means when the Holy Ghost came on them, it came on them and when it came, it generated thanksgiving because what they were praying for has happened. That's the part the people had. They had them giving thanks because what they prayed for has happened. If I'm teaching, say I hear you. What are, what are we praying for has happened. What they were praying for has happened. Sometimes our problem as believers is that we give up early. We give up easily. You know, we surrender fast. And sometimes that surrendering comes from laziness. And sometimes it comes from lack of clear teaching. In the prayer of asking and receiving, you ask and receive now, and you start giving thanks. You don't pray again. You just keep giving thanks until what you have asked for arrives. But in the prayer of supplication, it's not like that. You keep praying and keep praying and keep praying that prayer until, and even when it arrives, you keep praying again. You keep praying because you will still need another supply for tomorrow. You will need another supply for next tomorrow. And even if you don't need more supply, you will need to keep what has just come. I'm teaching. If you're hearing me shout, I hear, I hear. That's right. Keep praying and pray. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So what is the meaning of supplication? It means to have a fixed petition. The word supplication means to have a fixed petition. Very definite. Paul prayed for them. He didn't pray in with ambiguity. He was specific. The eyes of your understanding. What about the eyes? Be enlightened. He was specific. That you may know the hope of your calling. That you may know the riches of the glory of his inheritance among the saints. Specific. That you may know the exceeding greatness of his power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the specific points. There was no ambiguity. He didn't pray and say, just be blessed. Eh -eh. He had specific points that he prayed for for the church at Ephesus, for the church at Philippi, for the church at Colossae. He had specific prayer points. And he prayed those prayers until he saw the answers manifesting. He prayed them until the answers manifested in those churches. And matured believers were raised from those churches because of the result of the prayer and the teaching ministry of the apostle. Somebody shout, I hear you. So when you come to this kind of prayer, you're coming like a lawyer to argue a case. You're coming to argue a case. You insist. You insist. You refuse to ship ground. You insist. You, 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 you collect those scriptures that talk about those prayers. You stay with those scriptures and insist until you see it. You are like a lawyer in those kind of prayers. It's intelligent prayer. Supplication is very intelligent because you're coming with enough grounds to insist that this has to happen. You insist. Amen? I said amen. I'm not hearing your amen. You insist. Contending among men. You, you are contending among men. This also affects when you're praying for people in authority that you need them to favor you. You're going for a visa in the embassy. You don't just say, visa, I receive, I take. Because remember, the people that will determine your visa are people. They will ask you questions and they will make up their mind whether to give you the visa or not. So, because it is people that can create circumstances, supplication is the prayer. Because it's not all in your hands. And it's not a spiritual blessing. Visa is not in your hand. And visa is not a spiritual blessing. Visa is you contending with the authorities of a country to open their gate for you to enter. You didn't hear what I said. Visa is you in contention with the gates and the authorities of a nation to, to be convinced that you are worthy to enter their country. So when you're going for visa, you, you stay in supplication. You insist in prayer until the visa is given. You don't just say, well, I receive my visa now. Thank you, Jesus. When you go there, the man will look at you and say, bam, we are not giving you a visa. Come, 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 come back after three years. 
You are, you are contending with men that have the capacity to generate circumstances. I'm teaching here. Same thing with marriage. Marriage, you are dealing with factors. Her parents can stand on the way. Haven't you seen where parents spoil the marriage? The girl is in love with the guy. But her father has such, such influence in the society. That if the father said, don't marry him and you insist. You and the boy can be sent on exile. To Niger Republic. I'm not joking. There are fathers that are so powerful in the society. If you come against them, you're coming against the society. Am I teaching here? So when you have such parents, you, you know the level of power your father and mother have. You, you supplicate. You supplicate in prayer. Until your father will, by reason of too much power you generated in prayer, your father will dream and inside the dream they will tell him, let her go. Let her go. Let And as the finger wants to enter his eye, he wakes up. You say, come, come. You say, what marry? Just the worker. Take car. Take house. I'm going to go enjoy. What, what you did was, you had power with God, so you prevailed among men. I'm teaching in this house. If you're hearing me shout, I hear. You have prevailed. It's not a prayer of faith. It's not asking and receiving. Because you know, you're contending with powers. You're contending with powers. Your father has such influence that he can even tell the police to arrest you. And they will arrest you and put you in the cell. And you know the way police things used to happen. You will be inside that cell and you will be implicated. And you will enter prison. Just because you want to marry. And you will do Paul and Silas in the prison. And I don't know if you have enough knowledge to make angels enter there. Just for marriage. Your parents will be crying for nothing. They will tell you, we told you, don't enter there. It's a strong house. So if it's a strong house, prevail with God. When you have power with God, you can control circumstances. I feel like I'm talking here. So the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Make a tremendous what? Power available. And that power is dynamic in its workings. You start doing things and people say, where are you coming from? Who is your father? Is in heaven. They, they, they say, look, the kind of things you're doing, ordinary people cannot do it. Yeah, you have power with God. So men are a walkover. I'm teaching good. If you're hearing what I'm teaching, shout, I hear you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So let's do a little bit of exegesis before we close. The book of first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 put it up let me open up something then we round up i exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men all of this put together is one prayer supplication so the prayer paul is advocating for here in timothy is the prayer of supplication then paul is saying in this prayer of supplication intercession and giving of thanks be made for all men let, let me quickly break something down here for you you do not intercede for men no man intercedes for men intercession means you are a go between between, between that man and god the only person that has that office to intercede for men is Jesus. Nobody else. So when churches say these are our intercessors, it's lack of knowledge. No man intercedes. It's only the man, Jesus, who intercedes. So that place they put intercession there is supposed to be supplication. It's translators. Uh, in inefficiency in in words as at that time so prayers supplication or petition prayers petition and giving of thanks be made for all men not intercession intercession is strictly the work of jesus strictly somebody say i hear you hebrews seven twenty five. look at it here wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him seeing he ever liveth to make what 
Uh -huh. That is the job of Jesus to intercede. So that word was wrongly picked there in Timothy. Look at First Timothy chapter four, verse five. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And it is sanctified. It is used in approaching the king just like supplication. The word intercession. Amen. I said amen. So that prayer in First Timothy 4, 5 we just read is actually petition prayer. A prayer of petition. Petition. He was describing intercession as it regards the work of christ let me give you another place where the word intercession is used as it regards to the work of christ romans chapter 8 verse 33 who shall lay charge or who shall lay anything to the charge of god's elect it is god that justify it that justify it it is god that justify it 34 who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died, ye rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession. So intercessory ministry is the ministry of Jesus. Another word for intercession or for Jesus as intercessor is the word mediator intercessor or mediator the word mediator means a go between two the person that stands between you and god to plead your case and only jesus can do that no man can do that are we teaching if you understand this i hear you so most of the things christians call intercessory prayer are actually prayers of supplication or prayers of petition it's just lack of teaching that makes them call it intercessory prayer because that is the absolute total office of jesus christ and let me tell you intercession is not a prayer it's what christ has done it's not even a prayer that is what christ did in his death burial resurrection ascension and glorification at the right hand of majesty and because he is there his presence there is our intercession So his presence there at the right hand of majesty is the intercession that is making for us. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man. Did he say the man? Talk to me, city. The man. Who is the mediator? Is he man or man? So how many people intercede for us? One, who is he? jesus so we don't do intercessory prayer intercess intercession is jesus's office we supplicate we pray prayers of petition on behalf of one another and on behalf of the man of god our pastor we pray for our pastor touch your neighbor say i pray for my pastor even if you don't, as you're saying it, don't be guilty. Just say it in faith because you will start this night. Touch your neighbor, say, I pray for my pastor. Amen. I said, Amen. Hebrews 11 2. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Romans 8 34. Who is he that condemned it? It is Christ that died. It is, yea, it is he that is risen. Now, so that verse 34 is the intercessory ministry of Jesus. Go back to verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession. It's not even we, it's the Spirit itself. Now, that Spirit itself. It is the ministry of the Holy Spirit in helping our infirmities. So there is the ministry of the Holy Spirit to help or aid us in prayer. And there is the office of Jesus as our intercessor. So the Holy Ghost and Jesus, which is one, is the only office that intercedes. We don't intercede. Am I teaching here? 
So don't go around telling people I'm an intercessor. You're only exposing your ignorance. You're not an intercessor. Your blood cannot save a fly. You can't be an intercessor. The intercessor here is the person that qualifies to present an offering before the judge on your behalf that will convince the judge to overlook your offense. That's an intercessor. I'm teaching you. And there's only one, Jesus. You are not the intercessor. But you can say you are the supplicator. Yeah, I am going to make supplication on your behalf. Uh huh. Then what you're saying is, I'm going to pray for you without stopping. I'm go I'm not going to shift ground. I'm going to maintain my my position in prayer on your behalf until I'm going to prevail over men by generating power with God. See, I hear you. If I'm teaching, shout, I hear. So when we gather in that prayer section and we say, let's pray for Papa now that he be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. And you begin to pray. We pray today for Papa. Wherever men have gathered because you're dealing with men because men are responsible for creating circumstances. When they say I die, which people did it? Men, they created the story. They created all that story. And only God knows what circumstances they had created to ensure I died. But prayers, your prayers turn to my salvation. See, I hear you. Yeah, your prayers turn to my salvation. So what they planned that was to finish me, promoted me. It made me more popular. They spend their money, spend their time, spend their energy. And God, by your prayers, generating power, prevailed over their arrows, prevailed over their setup, prevailed over their conspiracy. And they were planning my downfall. And I was moving as if they were planning nothing. Why? We generated power with God. So we prevailed over men. When you say, Papa, see, I love you. I'm going to support your ministry. What you're saying is, Papa, my knees are on the ground. Nothing shall happen to you. I'm going to stand my ground. I'm not going to shift ground. Evil will not be for you. When you see ministries that collapse in the hands of nonsense, it's because the members didn't pray for their pastor. Do you know in some churches, they are very happy to talk about how their pastor and his wife are fighting. Mama and Papa, if you see the way they fought last Sunday, that our church has become drama. Every time we go there, they are fighting. Papa just landed Mama's lap. Boy! Mama said, a lie. She removed her shoe. What did they happen? Before you know, Papa back, don't they bleed? Ushers carry Papa, enter office. Church, don't close. And they go next Sunday to see part two. Can you see the kind of members in that church? Oh, Jesus. What I'm telling you, I know some churches where the pastor and the wife, they fight for service. And it's because nobody's praying for them. No prayer cover. They have exposed them to the arrows of battle without support. Mama and I are right in the face of battle on your behalf. We are the ones confronting all the evil that darkness brings against all of you. It's two of us that are in the forefront. So if there's anybody you should pray for it's two of us because the more we triumph the more you advance the anointing does not flow from bottom to head it flows from head to bottom that is why we must generate a prayer cover for our spiritual leader why his triumph is our triumph his victory is our victory if mama makes me unhappy and i come here i will speak nonsense I'll tell you, no prayer of supplication. The prayer of supplication is called traditional prayer. Write down. You'll be writing nonsense and you will be believing nonsense because you have not covered me. So me, I have intention and the tension is punishing your destiny. But we don't quarrel. We're always happy. Two of us, no wahala. In and out of season, we don't get wahala. Our misunderstanding is comedy time. Even when we misunderstand and we spark, 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 we turn it to laughter. We have lived like that for 24 or 25 years now. And it's just beginning. But listen, you need to pray for us because we are penetrating territories now. How many of you know what I'm talking about? With this message, we are spearheading globally. We are tampering with territories. If there was a time you need to pray for us, it's now. 
Let me prophesy. If there was ever a time power city is taking over the world, it is now. Listen, we are, t we are possessing territories. We are taking over nations. Somebody is not shouting that amen. Touch your neighbor say it's takeover time. Collectively, we are revealing Jesus to our generation. If your amen is louder, receive a blessing. Please sit down, let's talk because this is very serious. That's why you must build a prayer cover for us. When you gather to pray, the moment they raise our prayer point, stop everything and stay on that prayer. And don't be in a hurry to finish that prayer. Stay there until you are sure you have gotten somewhere. And then when we come tomorrow, we continue. We are not giving in, we are not giving up. This message of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations. Somebody shout, I'm a partaker. So you praying for us, you have no option. Except you are not saved. Except you are not born again. That you pray for us is not optional. It's compulsory. Do you see the passion with which Paul made the appeal? Brethren, I beseech you. See the appeal. Pray for us. This apostle Paul, he was begging for prayer everywhere. Yes. He was begging for prayer. Please pray for us because he was confronted ah, shipwreck shipwreck imprisonment all kinds of things eh? the beast of ephesus the man was fighting all kinds of devils so everywhere he went please pray for us pray for us pray for us because the man that is carrying the mandate yeah. is the man that receives the arrows so you need to pray for him somebody say you can't you pray for yourself i pray for you I study for you. Are you understanding? I give you leadership. Eh? I give you direction. Okay? We, 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 we labor to make sure the ministry is able to cater for your spiritual welfare. All of that is time consuming. The only one you are required to do is to pray for us and give us money. So we can preach it without restriction. That's why your prosperity is not a prayer point. It's an answered prayer. I'm teaching you. Even those of you watching on television, you are still part of this church. Your prayer for us is not optional. It's compulsory. Thank you, Lord. I say thank you, Lord. So it, it's the prayer of supplication, fixed prayer, heartfelt. And you know, these prayers become more powerful and strong when you put yourself inside, when you make the prayers become part of you, when you see yourself as a part of me, when you start praying for me, and you see that if something touch Papa now or Mama now, we won't go to church on Wednesday, even Sunday. When you begin to think like that, how will my life be if Papa is removed from my life? How is my life going to be? Remove doesn't mean die. It doesn't mean die. I could move to India and start church. I have been removed. I'm serious. So, when you now sit down and count the cost and you see how important we are in your life now and in your future then when you now pray you pray with personal interest you're not just a father in the name of jail pray for papa if you like let papa succeed if you like let him not succeed that is his business but father so that it will not be said that i didn't pray i pray for papa take care of papa papa take care hallelujah amen take care oh, oh, oh. next prayer point but when you put yourself inside and you see how important when you start that prayer you don't even want to hear clapping of hand because hey this is my destiny i am protecting in my pastor i'm teaching here somebody told me the story of somebody's uh, uh, car that was 
hijacked by armed robbers. And as they were discussing over the hijack of a brand new car, somebody called him and said, I've been trying to reach you. You are not answering me. He said, sorry, I've been on the phone with a friend. What are you discussing like that? He said, our friend's car has just been snatched. Your friend? Where? He said, in so-so and so place. He said, what is his name? He told him. He said, okay, don't worry. I'll talk to the commissioner of police. He picked the phone. He said, commissioner of police, that car that has been stolen, I have interest. I want that car out now. Within two hours, they brought the car. The commission of police ordered the entire police force in the state to shut down all borders and all policemen move to work. In two hours, they brought the car because somebody important to the commissioner personalized it. If you are just a commissioner, I know that person, oh, please, if there's anything you can do, it won't be as fast as that. So when it comes to prayers of supplication, when you put yourself in the prayer, the tension of the prayer increases. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Yeah, it increases. But if you just pray like, Father, in the name of Jesus, you know, this is our papa self. He gets sharp mouth too much. But just help him so that... <laughs> Why no go get sharp mouth? I give you a mouth. You no get sharp mouth. You get dull mouth. You get dull mouth. How many of you get sharp mouth? Exactly. Say now God give me sharp mouth. That your enemies cannot resist. It's only a sharp mouth that enemies cannot resist. Before they say one, well, you have said 25, they say okay, we surrender. <laughs> How many, of you, how many of you have encountered a woman that can talk very well? You can't argue. Why she tell you, this is what I said. And your daughter said, no, no, no. I said this, I said this. I said, you just say, oh, I agree. No, Anna. <laughs> Where you want to start? Sharp mouth. Area boy strategy. Open eye. So when it comes to prayers of supplication, you must be armed with scripture. So when you start the prayer, especially for your pastor, you put yourself in the picture and personalize the prayer. Then that one, even if it's two hours, you will not be feeling angry. The prayer don't day. <laughs> stop now. The no grief stop. I know we pray again. The worker go stand for one corner. They get fresh air. They are still praying. I'll go also. <laughs> it is annoying you. It affects you. <laughs> See, the prayer God never answered. Eh, eh, that kind of prayer. You know they finish. It's continued, heartfelt, earnest. See the qualities involved in the prayer. Earnest, heartfelt, continued, fervent. Those are not casual adjectives. Those are heavy adjectives. When the church begins to pray like that for their man of God, the church will triumph. Huh. I prophesy over every one of you here, you will generate power and prevail over men. I didn't hear that amen somebody I didn't hear that amen somebody I didn't hear that amen somebody lift your right hand and say in the name of Jesus I will control situations can you stand on your feet and shout it very loud in the name of Jesus I will control situations I will generate power in the place of prayer and I will prevail over men over situations over circumstances in my lifetime i will not be defeated the greater one is in me i am born of god i overcome the world i generate power in prayer and i prevail over situations nobody will say no to me because i will generate power and prevail over situations i cannot be defeated I am more than a conqueror. The greater one is in me. I cannot fail. For me to fail, God will have to fail. And God cannot fail. Therefore, I cannot fail. I am righteous in Christ Jesus. And the righteousness of faith speak it. I say in the name of Jesus, I will pray in my lifetime. I will generate power in my lifetime and I will prevail over men and circumstances 
if your amen is louder it is done now i declare over you today every circumstance that is making noise in your face after this service that circumstance is subdued in this place of teaching along with prayer in the course of this service every noise making situation molesting and harassing your peace is arrested and brought under control 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 in the name of jesus you are blessed you are lifted you are favored situations are coming your way that will bring rest in your life good situations that will generate opportunities that will better your destiny they are released your way right now in the name of jesus it is well with you in jesus precious name if you believe in let your amen slap the devil on the face oh my goodness what a time of growing in the knowledge of christ revelation upon revelation of god's word we're going to get into a time of prayer right now remember the power is in your heart and in your mouth we begin to exercise the authority of the believer when we begin to speak words that are consistent with the finished work of Christ. Let's get into a moment of prayer right now. Lift your two hands and begin to thank him for all of this. Begin to thank him for growth in knowledge. Growth in the knowledge of Christ. Begin to thank God for growth in the knowledge of Christ. Growth in the knowledge of Christ. Growth in the knowledge of Christ. Begin to thank God for growth in the knowledge of Christ. Just praise and bless him. Thank God for growth in the knowledge of Christ. In the knowledge of Christ. Christ dwells in your heart by faith. Christ dwells in your heart by faith. Begin to thank him that Christ dwells in your heart by faith. Begin to thank him for money coming from every direction. Go ahead and give him thanks. 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 Zimona koto lida bababash. Mengro nazi kele de boska. Babara katenenga. Ele moroko tuska. Bereke tila nama. Mereko tola ninge. Ele moroko tuna. Mama marene kinda. Jegele de boroka. Sebere keta nange. Ele mozaki lena. Marando nenge lena. Egere te sekila. Egebo jakayana. Ele moroko tuska. Bebere keta lana. E shakila nama. E shakila nama. E shakila nama. E shakila nama. Mangere te zobula. Brenda ka. Skotiba, engele monoske, babara katoda, prenda sukalana, mamra shakalana gamari katana gaga. Give him thanks and praise. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear that? Amen. Like thunder. Stretch your hands and let's begin to call the things that be not as though they were everything that you know the word of god guarantees you in this life begin to call it forth i want to hear your authoritative voices let's pray together call the things that be not as though they were even god who quickened the dead by calling the things that be not as though they were babaro kotuna kalana shekolodo boska tala nama Babara katula na maka lepira Babara katina kalema no soko tolena Father we call for creative miracles 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 Opportunities, favors, increase, enlargement We call for favors We call for connections We call for companies We call for jobs We call for health We call for favors We call for marriage We call for fruitfulness Matu kalaba we call for health, we call for favor, we call for employment, we call for jobs, we call for admissions, we call for monies, we call for school fees, we call for houses, we call for lands, we call for cars, we call for cars, we call for jobs, we call for investors, we call for connections, we call for 
God for opportunities. Mangrata skupelega, eke bo shakale de bosaya, ingala na maro, eke le de bajo kara na kasta, eke bo suta la nama, eke le de kipa sota la da babaya, eke le de boje kara de bosata, eke le bo rakata, mangrata suke le de bara, mangrata kile, bebere ke tu skata la da bara katina kaya, eke bo shaya da, 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 eke bo shaya da. Take a bus shyada, 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 take a bus command the devil to take his hands off of your job all your family of your money of your marriage of your husband of your wife of your children command the devil take his hands off in the name of jesus let's pray together in my name you shall cast out devils in my name you shall cast out devils every satanic aggression every satanic harassment every resistance every demonic resistance satan take your hands off of our jobs of our companies of our careers, of our wives, of our husbands. Barika tona kaya, heke bo shaya, 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 heke bo shaya. Satan, take your hands off. Bareto le de baraka tona kaya. Era kaba, era kaba, era kaba. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it is done, let that amen come like thunder. Listen very carefully. 2,000 years ago, Jesus defeated the devil permanently. You are the one in authority. You are seated with Christ far above principalities and powers. They are under your feet. Every wizard, every witch, every devil is under your feet. I said it's under your feet. I said it's under your feet. Fear is under your feet. Shame is under your feet. I'm not hearing that amen somebody i want you to stretch your hands towards us and let that amen become like thunder as i pray right now in the name of jesus barriers are broken obstacles broken resistance broken whatever is not planted by my father is rooted out wherever they are gathered to resist your advancement they are scattered in the name of jesus by the favor of god your business stands strong your mountain stands strong your career stands strong your job stands strong your marriage stands strong your family stands strong in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i break the control of satan over your marriage over your children satan take your hands off in the name of jesus I command favor, favor, favor. Receive jobs, employments, receive admissions, receive increase. In the name of Jesus, every sickness be healed. I rebuke infirmity. I rebuke disease. I rebuke disease. Terminal disease, you are terminated. Terminated. High blood pressure, stop. Blood sugar, be flushed out. In the name of Jesus, blood disease be healed be healed skin disease be healed in the name of jesus ministry expand career expand company expand business expand receive the grace for evangelism receive the grace for evangelism receive the grace for evangelism receive favor make money make money make money make money engage industry solve societal problems receive ideas concepts insights favors ideas concepts insights favors connections new relationships receive them in the name of jesus any relationship that is subtracting from you i command divine trouble to end that relationship in the name of jesus 
receive relationships of value receive relationships of impact receive relationships of progress receive relationships of edification receive it in the name of jesus this year on every side you will record victory record victory record victory record victory record victory in the name of jesus it is done in jesus precious name if you believe it is done let that amen come like thunder go ahead and celebrate celebrate increase celebrate expansion celebrate increase celebrate expansion celebrate 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 Ce -ce -ce celebrate oh my goodness what a time of prayer sweet hour of prayer oh sweet hour of prayer i believe that answers are flooding your house flooding your job flooding your office flooding your businesses is a harvest of answers today i'm expecting testimonies i want to hear from you today about what god has done already in your life as a result of these teachings and as a result of these consecrated prayer times even as the year has just begun and let me also mention that these teachings continue 6 a.m 12 noon and i'll be back again tomorrow evening at 10 p.m gmt plus one but remember please i want you to intentionally and deliberately listen carefully intentionally and deliberately against tomorrow night intentionally and deliberately I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you make a list of five to ten persons that you will bring on the platform to hear this word tomorrow is going to be our day of evangelism you're going to share with somebody what's going on on this platform make a list of five to ten persons that you will invite to be part of the teaching tomorrow. It's very critical. Make that list. Then tomorrow when we come on the platform, as your people begin to come on, begin to welcome them. I'm going to be with you on the platform tomorrow. I'm going to be with you live on the platform. And I'm going to see people that have responded to this instruction. And you can't keep eating and eating and eating and just sitting down. The essence of the teaching of God's word is to equip the saints to do the work of ministry. I believe you've been equipped to some level now. Now it's time for you to begin to do the work of ministry. I want us to triple our number of people hearing this good word tomorrow in the broadcast. I'm looking forward to seeing you in action tomorrow night. I'm excited, friends, truly excited. And I thank God for what Christ has done for us. Let's cover the earth with the fragrance of the grace of Christ. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Amen. Amen to you.